All right, great. So um, I guess the, the first thing that I wanted to ask you about was um, the system that you came up with over the last few years that you've now been publishing. Uh, I guess, what was the impetus for your creation of this system? Essentially, just because it seemed like things were kind of getting stagnated. So I wanted to try to move things forward a little bit, at least for myself, uh -huh. in terms of integrating more science. I got into psychology, as you know, uh -huh. started trying to figure out a way to, to, to blend more empirical methods into, into what we're doing so that we could try to actually, you know, not be 100 years behind just for the sake of it being the last good thing try to make a you know continue the, the good things <laughs> so, so keep it going sure sure um how did you go about uh, creating implementing the tarot system and creating a tarot system and incorporating it into um the system that you refer to as the sss or what do, how i guess uh, for the purposes of the interview you should um can we hear the name of the total system and uh what it its purpose is it's essentially the, the three s's just stand for the sun, the snake, and the star. Mm -hmm. The sun represents basically everything that would be considered the regular magical criterion, like the golden dawns, like the, all the basic systems that we already all know. That would be considered the sun. Mm -hmm. The snake is, is essentially from, the, in the standard system, what would be considered the HGA, but I've kind of begun to think about it as the HGA obviously the knowledge conversation with the holy guardian angel is um sort of this point where the the information that we're getting back this 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 conversation that we're having in my interpretation of, of things is actually genetic information so sort of so it's going to be individually tailored for everybody determining what you've been doing what your necessities are at that point so it's not going to be like an objective um experience but it is going to be potently objective in a sense that the, the actual experience might be a little different for everybody but the actual effects of it are going to propel you forward into this so-called abyss so to speak if we're going to use that kind of language um, so that we stick to something that we, we're all probably very familiar with so it's going to propel, propel you forward in that except that in, in how I've been thinking about it the HGA is actually the beginning of receiving genetic information that's going to actually then start to tweak you neurologically so that you can move into this abyss state which in my eyes is interfacing with what we're calling the, the subatomic world or the quantum world which would be this portal or whatever you want to call it a gateway to where things are non-locally um inter uh, you know quantum the quantum laws but interfacing with that as a human being, so I mean that's way up there. But we're, that's that's kind of the trajectory of my interpretation of the magical system, so to speak. Sure, sure. So, um, does is this system in? I mean, is it in conformity with the Lemic law, or is it taking the Lemic law and changing it somehow, or modifying it in a way? The way I look at that is, it's kind of different in the sense that. I don't think that there's a dissolution of your personality at the end of the road. I think uh -huh. that your personality is an important aspect of doing magic in the first place. So I don't, I don't think that at the end of it all, we're, we're going to like just, you know, give it Be up. Be absorbed. Yes. Drop in the ocean. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So essentially there would be no pivotal difference in, in the, in the regimen or the, the, the types of, except, certain cosmological details that I'd be focusing on, like shifting everything to the north, which I know Crowley was doing a little bit of, but I really took it to the full aspect of shifting everything to the north instead of the east for the sun. It's more like the north, um, uh, where it would be recognizing the electromagnetic tides instead of actually the, the, the sun rising. So. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he was thinking about when he was, um, but that doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is uh, that would be a parallel into one of the fringe aspects that he actually tweaked from the system that he adopted. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've kind of adopted this septogram or this seven-pointed star kind of model where it's kind of 
moving counterclockwise uh, in the northern direction, and it's actually going down into the microcosm, considering that we would be the macrocosm. Like, I'm trying to talk about the subatomic world, so it would be that formula where the seven-pointed star is moving in the opposite direction to move down instead of um, to draw the macrocosm like the old formulas, so to speak, um, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. And... Um... Well, it makes sense to me because I'm very familiar with your work, having read it. Um, I, I think that um, I think that there's a lot to this system and there's a lot to grasp to it. Um, I, one thing that stood out to me, though, was like um, how advanced the system really was and um, how much understanding and knowledge actually you used and incorporated within the system. This wouldn't be something that I would say that uh, your average Joe on the street's definitely going to be able to just walk into and understand just like that. Uh, and and that's not a, any type of slam or anything. I think that's great because a lot of the magic stuff, especially in the books that we read, only get so far as to cover like just very basic themes. I mean, you see every book has, you know, a lesser banishing ritual. Every book has, um, you know, all these basic rituals incorporated, but none of them go into magical theory as deeply as you have. And I think that the one thing that stood out most to me was uh, you're also developing that tarot system. And um, I, I, I really don't think people can appreciate unless they delve into tarot themselves, how complicated it is to create a tarot system. <sighs> Right. What, uh, yeah, what did you do with your tarot system that differentiates it from like the Toth tarot, for, for example? Well, I tried to incorporate these principles, first of all. So, I mean, a lot of the symbolism I'm using is specifically geared towards this, this genetic hurdle in, in terms of the metabolic. A lot of that has to do with the philosophy that our metabolic system is all out of whack because of our diet and a lot of the entertainment we're using this especially like the kinds of things that we're on right now that the flicker rates um, a lot of these things actually change our brain waves <laughs> um, so I mean um, it has to do with taking these things into consideration so these genetic tr tr these genetic modifications trying to snap things back into a, into a pure sense so that we can actually use these rituals properly because in, in a modern time our, our central nervous system and our, especially, like I said, our met metabolic system more directly um, is, is being tampered with through our general daily life. So in order to use these ancient practices that people were developing that didn't have this, this interface with these artificial or as artificial of, of a way of life, we need to kind of readopt different ways to kind of bar um, blockade that or, or navigate around that way of life so that we can um, tr allow our central nervous system to be reconfigured the way it's supposed to be through doing these rituals in the first place. Okay, and that's uh, and you're using sound to do that um, and specific frequencies and uh, I saw that you the middle pillar ritual was changed to be in accordance with what you found through your own scientific study into sound um can we go into that a little bit because to me as a musician that and also as a user of the hemisync system from the monroe institute sound has a very big is a, is a very big deal to me and uh and i think mantra too uh because you know um if you read going back to like eastern systems mantra was used to stimulate the pineal gland and or pineal depending upon how you say that and um what have you found and why did you change the middle pill pillar ritual um, and what frequencies are you using in that? I suppose I should ask these things one at a time. Let's let's try that, man. <laughs> Let me, no, it's uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Take two. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, sound is really uh, an important factor to me as a musician and as a magician. And I think that uh, your system, when you redid the middle pillar ritual, uh, you reconfigured it to be in accordance with what you discovered. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah. What I, what I found actually was kind of amazing, especially if you have an understanding of statistics and probabilities. Um, I can explain that, I guess, once I explain what I found through this little analysis I did. But what led me to this is I realized that the Kabbalah, the gematria, the actual, what the gematria, for those of you that don't know, is the numerical, the numerical 